Drafting is fun, but bidding is better. Let's talk auction for fantasy baseball. Here's some of the strategies that can help you win. Tip number one, be prepared. I mean, it sounds simple, but you have to have your homework done beforehand. You can't just walk into an auction room blindly and hope to get a good team. Now, this goes for any fantasy draft you do, no matter what the format is. Of course, when you go into a typical draft, you know your ADP, you might have rankings, whatever. But on auction, you really need to be more prepared ahead of time. You don't have to calculate your own auction values and all of that, but at least have an idea about how much you are willing to spend for each player, who you value, who you don't. Because it's not about who falls to you in the draft. It's about who you're willing to go out and get. That's what's great about auction drafts is you can basically get whoever you want. You can't get all the players you want, but if there are certain players you're willing to pay for and hopefully they're good values, you can get them. Also, like with any sort of draft for any fantasy sport, you got to kind of know your league mates a little bit or at least know what to expect and try to read the room when the auction starts. Tip number two, gauge the temperature of the room. This is a phrase I borrow from Ariel Cohen. He says that, you know, an auction is going to be hot or cold, meaning either people are paying fast and furious early and often, or they're not. They're sitting back, maybe being a little more conservative and waiting. People don't want to overspend. And sometimes you can tell right away. Sure, the first players to be nominated are always going to be the studs, most likely, and people are going to pay up to get them. But are they paying over value? Is there a lot of bidding coming in? How many people are active? Is it the same people? So you kind of get a sense of how things are going to go. Are there any players who are even going below their value or their expected value? You basically have to be ready to read and react. Grab those values when you're there. And if everybody's spending hand over fist early, you don't have to keep up with them. Wait until the time is right. So that leads to tip number three. You have to be active even if you don't want to be, which means you can bid even if you don't want a player. This is important for a couple of reasons. First of all, you don't want to only bid on the players you want because, first of all, you might miss out on some values. It might not be one of your favorite targets, but if a guy is going for way under his expected value, you can still take advantage. Number two, you don't want to let on who you're interested in all the time. If you only bid on the players you want, everybody knows who you want. And finally, you sometimes just have to keep people honest. If you see a player who's three, four dollars under expected value, throw out another dollar there and see if the guy who's bid last is going to keep up with you. You have to price in force. This is important because you keep people at what their budget should be. And you don't let everyone get away with steals. Next tip I'm going to say is when it's your turn to nominate, do so wisely. Don't just pick the first guy off the list or any random player. You should have some thought behind it. Now, it doesn't mean that you only nominate a player you want, because guess what? Every player you nominate isn't going to be a player that you come away with. Early in the draft, I'm going to nominate a player from a position where I want to kind of see where they're going, get a sense of the value of that player or that position. For example, let's say I'm interested in a young shortstop who could break out, but I'm not really sure how to value him. Someone like O'Neill Cruz in Pittsburgh, Anthony Volpe of the Yankees. Think about the guy I want more. I'm going to nominate the other one. So if I throw out Cruz and I see he's going for $20, now I realize, okay, whether they like him better or Volpe not, probably a little bit better, I know that I might have to spend more than 10 or 11 bucks to get a player like that. I think this is especially important with pitchers, including closers, because if you think, I don't want to spend more than 20 for a top tier closer, well, when you see a guy like Edwin Diaz coming off injury, going for 30, you better believe you're not going to get a guy like Camilo Duvall for 19. And let's also not forget about pace. Don't be that guy who nominates Ronald Acuna for $1. Number five, my tip here is when you start to acquire some semblance of a roster, now start thinking about roster construction. Are you going to go stars and scrubs? Are you going to go purely for value and try to add up a team that at the end of the day has the highest plus EV in terms of expected value? Whatever your strategy is, maybe you're going pitcher heavy, whatever. You have to think about it and your roster has to make sense. I'll say that regardless of what it looks like at the end of the day, you have to have at least one or two elite players, one on offense, one as far as pitches. You don't have to spend up on an ace, but don't fill out a rotation that has only mid and late rotation guys. 
My next tip is going to be look for the values mid-draft. You know early on, even though technically anyone could get nominated with any pick, it's typically going to be the stars first. At the end of the draft, it's going to be those dollar day guys, you know, the sleepers, the flyers, whatever, the bargains. But in the middle of the draft, when people have already kind of got into it, some people have spent money, some people have been waiting, and people are starting to kind of bog down, this is where you can get those surprising values where you look back and say, how did he go so cheap? The studs are going to go for a lot. The cheap players are going to go for a buck or two. But it's those mid-tier guys that really can make the difference. The one who is expected to be about 10 bucks and he goes for five. Look, I know everybody's scared to death of Giancarlo Stanton this coming season, but I just did an auction where he went for $1. Why did nobody spend more than $1 for a guy who could potentially hit 40 home runs if he can just kind of stay healthy? The middle of the draft is not the most exciting part, but sometimes it's the most important part. Tip number seven don't run out of money. This is especially true if you're playing in a two catcher, five outfielder format like NFBC. If you're in a deeper league, if you're in a dynasty or an only league, look, you just can't go too heavy on the budget because before you know it, you're going to be picking up guys who aren't cracking the 40 man roster and they're on your roster. This doesn't mean you can't spend up on studs early or that you have to be a miser, but you have to budget wisely. So yeah, you have to keep an eye on how much you have left versus how many spots you have to fill so that you're not left with a star and a bunch of scrubs. And this is my last tip, but I'll say it might be the most important. You wanna identify your dollar day guys ahead of time and be ready to pounce. Unless you're just way too conservative with your budget, you're probably at the end of the draft gonna have to pick at least a couple of guys who are a dollar maximum because that's all you got left. And that is fine, especially filling out your bench. These are sometimes some of the best players to have on your team because it costs you almost nothing and they can break out. Again, you don't want your roster half full of them, but you do want to get your favorite sleepers at this point in the draft, but know who they're gonna be and be ready because as soon as you throw out that dollar bid, if somebody outbids, you have to go to plan B. Or if somebody else puts out a dollar for that guy that you wanted, see if you have that extra buck so you can grab him. Some of my favorite targets right now that I've seen go cheap in drafts could be available for a dollar or two. Michael Bush, who now should be an everyday player with the Cubs. Nelson Velasquez of the Royals has great power. Matt Walner of the Twins, definitely someone going under the radar, but he's got an everyday gig most likely. Some veterans who are either in decline or have question marks Matt Chapman in terms of where he's going to play Jose Abreu looks like he's on the way down but still produced in the second half of last year he went for a dollar in the draft I just did and Lucas Giolito who could bounce back at the very least hold down a rotation spot gave you some strikeouts and of course the rookies playing time is always the question but go for the guys who have great upside Paul Skeens of Pittsburgh Dylan Cruz among others Sure, auctions are more work, it takes more preparation, but that's what makes it worth it because it's so much more rewarding when you see your team at the end and especially if you win, if you follow these tips and strategies, I think you can do that. Speaking of, if you want draft strategy for fantasy baseball, any format, some of my favorite sleepers, breakouts, and busts, you can check all that out on my playlist right here.